Hello YouTube, it's FS Derek here again and I'm going to do a little video on weather, weather forecasting because we are scheduled to have quite an interesting weather day today in the southeast. We've got high winds forecast. At the moment the wind is, is quite light but uh, let's say we're going to go flying today. In fact we might go flying today. We might post a video um, of me flying in the real world weather uh, a bit later on. But let's just say we're thinking about flying today and we want to know what uh, we're going to encounter. So. There are two types of weather forecasts. Well, there are two types of weather information. One is what's actually happening at the moment, and the other one is a forecast of what's likely to happen. So uh, the one about the actual is called the METAR, and it's an actual report, a meteorological actual report. And here on the screen, I've got the METAR for my local airfield, local large airfield, which is Manston, which is listed here actually as um, Kent International Airport, but we all know it as Manston. And you can see it's issued on the 5th of the month, which is today at uh, 10 to 9, and the time is about uh, 9.20. So the first thing about the actuals is that they're issued twice an hour, and they're issued at uh, 10 to the hour, and every half an hour after that. So 20 past, so 20 and 50. So I'm looking at this one, it's 8.50, and the time actually is 9.22, so uh, that's uh, GMT. So... Uh, this is probably not the most recent one, and that's because I've had it on the screen for five or six minutes. So let's just see if anything changes. I'm going to click Get Metar again. And then we'll um, translate that. Now I can see straight away from these numbers here, 050850 Zulu, that uh, in fact it hasn't changed. But um, that's not surprising because obviously it's only three minutes old. The readings were taken, uh, or, or rather the... the um, it's only... 2.23 now, 2.3 as we call it, um, so it's unlikely to be up. Now, if you're a seasoned pilot, then the actual METAR itself, you'll be able to understand that, and it's in a very sort of a condensed format, and that, I think, relates to the days when it was all done by Morse code or teletype or whatever, and transmission bandwidth was a problem, so pilots had this sort of code. In fact, there's a lot of code and abbreviations in flying. Uh, and so, rather helpfully, this site has decoded it for us. So, uh, it's the airport, Kent International Airport, which is Echo Golf Mike Hotel. So, that's the first part. Then the second part is the uh, date that it was and time it was issued. So, it was 05 and then 0850 Zulu. Zulu is Greenwich Mean Time. That basically is also called um, UTC or Coordinated Universe Time, Universal Time Coordinated. It's a French expression. The first thing and the most interesting thing that a pilot is, uh, or the thing that a pilot's most interested in, is the wind. And here we've got 230 degrees, 14 knots. So the wind is blowing from 230 degrees. So that's not, it's not blowing to 230 degrees, it's actually the direction it's coming from. So in fact, uh, you're more interested in aviation with where the wind's coming from than where it's going to. Uh, you don't, you're not worried about the wind that's gone past you where it's off to you're worried about the wind that's coming towards you where it's coming from so 230 degrees and that's obviously done on the uh, degree scale so that's uh, where uh, zero is north and 180 degrees is south and 270 degrees is west so 230 is a sort of southwesterly so we've got a southwesterly at 14 knots 999 is the visibility and um, that means that the visibility is 10 kilometers or more so uh, once the visibility gets above 10 kilometers, we're not really worried. Um, you certainly need, need another digit. And my goodness, they're, they're a bit, you know, sparing with their digits. So we couldn't put another digit in there. So 999 just means more than 10 kilometers. That's in kilometers. And then uh, clouds. Well, there's a few at 015. Now, again, once you get into the flying, you'll realize that 015 has to be multiplied by 100 because everything is, we cut the last two zeros off just to save digits. Um, so 015 means 1500 feet. Now, um, above a certain uh, altitude, we, we start converting to flight levels, but we'll come over that, we'll deal with that later. At the moment, this is, this is weather. So we're talking about winds pretty close to the ground. So we're gonna be talking about a few hundred feet, a few thousand feet. So, uh, there's, a few, there's, a, so there's a few clouds at 1500 feet. And the temperature is at uh, is four degrees Celsius, and the dew point is one degree Celsius. And the reason why we're interested in the dew point is the dew point is the point at which fog starts to form. 
So the closer the actual temperature is to the dew point, the more likely we are to have fog. And because we're in the autumn, we are quite likely to have fog. So that's actually, um, they're, they're not too far away. The pressure, as I said, in Europe, we have in hectopascals. Uh, so there we've got a, a QNH, which basically means a regional weather pressure setting of uh, 1,023 hectopascals. And they very um, helpfully uh, for the American uh, audience provide a conversion there, which is 30.21 inches of mercury. Now, this is a free application, uh, metalreader.com. So you can get the actual weather anywhere. So if you're going to fly in an area and you find what the ICAO code is for your local airport and you put that in, then you, you're going to be able to get a, a metal. So that when you use real world weather in Flight Simulator, to the extent that it, that it really accurately models real world weather, uh, you'll be able to know pretty much. You'll, you'll be able to take off with a weather briefing, which is what all pilots do do. Now, the other thing I said was that we need a forecast, and I don't think we can get a forecast up on this site. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to um, a professional f uh, aviation site, and this is a site that um, uh, I would use as a pilot. Um, the emphasis of these videos, as you've probably found out, are, are, are really um, with the, from the point of view of the private pilot stroke owner of an aircraft. Um, the, I, I'm not by any means... Uh, saying that what I'm doing is perfect and in fact uh, if you're a private pilot a stroke owner then very rarely <laughs> is anything that you do absolutely perfect if you want sort of checklists and excellence then there are there are other um, YouTube channels where you can get that but really what I'm trying to do is give you a flavor of what it's like to fly in the real world as a real world private pilot here we can get an actual what was called an actual a metal uh, I'm going to have to put echo off Mark Hotel in again and we'll just go to that airfield and if I zoom in on that a bit you can see that uh, we've got now here we've got the actual uh, 05 the, 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 the 920 meta here and this is the one that we've already seen and this is the one that's just literally come come live so we're looking there, the winds are picking up a bit. They're still from 230 degrees. It's gone from 14 to 17. In fact, it's gone, if you look for the last few, they've, it's gone from 9 to 12 to 14 to 17. So you can see the winds are picking up in anticipation of uh, the storm that's coming. We've still got 10 kilometers or more visibility. There are a few clouds, and the cloud base is, is increasing. So we've got 1,000, 1,200 feet, 1,500 feet, 1,600 feet. And the temperature as the sun's come up um, is, has risen. So we've got a 202 temperature with a dew point of zero. Um, that was around about uh, um, 8.50, which is probably about dawn here. And then uh, the gap has increased. So the chances of fog are decreasing as uh, the day goes on. And as far as the pressure goes, the, the QNH in hectopascals is going down. So this 25, 23, 23, 21. So... Um, so we know how to interpret the meta. Now underneath here is the forecast, the area forecast. It's the terminal area forecast, if I remember correctly. And you can see we've got more gobbledygook. So let's just go back for a second and click decode on this and go again. And then we'll get the, the uh, TAF. There's, there are all the metas with the decode. And now here's the TAF with the decode. So it's a forecast for Echo Golf Mike Hotel. We know about the date and time format, so it's 05805. So it's about, uh, it was issued just about, uh, just over an hour ago. And it's valid from the fifth today, nine o'clock, to the fifth today, 18 o'clock. So it's valid really pretty much all day for flying all day. So the wind we've got at the moment, 250 degrees at 12 knots with uh, 10 kilometers visibility, a few clouds at 3000 feet. And now here we start to get into the probabilities. So, becoming BCMG uh, valid from between 9 and 11 o'clock. So this is a smaller bit of time. So what they're saying is, in general, we're going to have 250-12 knots with a few clouds at 3,000 feet. That's between 9 and 6. But between 9 and 11, things might be different. Between 9 and 11, we've got winds from 240 degrees, 20 knots, G gusting to 30 knots. 
So we could have, it's going to start to get windier between 9 and 11. And then becoming, here we are again today, the 5th, between 11 and 14. So between 11 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Wind from 250. So it's, the, the wind is, uh, is um, veering round. To 250, we've got 24 gusting to 40 knots. And then lastly, there's a 40% probability, prob 40, that uh, temporarily valid from 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock, the visibility will be 7 kilometers in showery rain or rain showers. So uh, what they're saying is there's a 40% chance of some rain at uh, some point between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And in the rain, the visibility is going to be reduced to 7 kilometres, which is still, you know, it's pretty good. So we're not talking major thunderstorms or anything. But that's a, a forecast there for um, a, uh, a day where you probably, you know, wouldn't want to go flying. Uh, not for recreational purposes anyway. You'd be better off um, staying on the ground. Now, just quickly, I'll show you two more charts that we use um, as uh, aviators, and they're the low-level charts, and they're called forms 214 and 215. Now, one uh, does one thing. One does the spot wind, and one is the forecast. So let's first of all look at the forecast. And here we have uh, the forecast for today. And as you can see, it's only the weather below 10,000 feet. When, and because light aircraft very, very rarely fly above 10,000 feet, this is really all we want. And what we can see is we can see a massive great cold front coming, sweeping down the, uh, down the UK. And you can see arrows here with obviously the strong winds here. So we've got a 20 knot northerly here. We've got a 40 knot uh, northwesterly here. And we're, we're about here. We're smack in the middle of uh, area C1 at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to look in the C box and we'll just start to read. Now there, there are three columns. One is the surface visibility and weather. WX stands for weather. Second one is the cloud and the last one is the temperature. So we've got 30 kilometers in uh, 30 kilometers. Now uh, you can see why they de de <laughs> decode this, can't you? Because I, think, uh, nil, I think that's nil weather. Uh, it's, but I, I won't uh, swear to that. We've got um, isolated uh, visibility of 3,000 meters, uh, which is a BR, which is f uh, fog, and isolated visibility of 200 meters in fog and freezing fog. Uh, LAN stands o over the land, and F far S is in the far south. So we've got isolated visibility 200 meters in fog or freezing fog over land in the far south until 11 o'clock Zulu. So um, now you know, I'm not going to pretend that I know I know what all this is about. So um, I'm going to um, leave you to do a bit of homework in the way that the best teachers do and and possibly find out what the rest of that means but we've obviously got isolated hill fog and the area that we're interested in fact is the one that's the most uh, complicated certainly uh, occasional there's turbulence because there's a key to the left here so you can see um here we've got here this is moderate and severe turbulence so occasionally moderate turbulence isolated severe turbulence in the north in area c1 and an isolated hill fog so the uh, cloud in area C is pretty much, um, remembering to add on the two zeros, 2,000 to 4,000, and then another layer at 4,000 to 6,000, and then uh, isolated, uh, scattered or broken ST uh, stratus, which is that thin layer of continuous cloud, 700 to 1,000 feet and 1,500 feet above over the land in the far south till 11 o'clock Zulu. So there's a lot of low cloud actually, um, uh, at the moment um, when we're flying up to 3,000 feet or 2,500 feet really we don't want to see cloud at 700 feet or 1,000 feet or 1,500 feet so the outlook um, until midnight uh, is the winds and turbulence weakening as a warm front approaches from the far west over Ireland but however bad it is in area C and C1 it's obviously um, far worse in area B so, and this is valid from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So, um, if I was going to go flying anywhere today, I would make sure it was a short flight and I would make sure I was on the ground by about um, 
11 o'clock. Now, that's the uh, low level forecast chart. And uh, last of all, I'm going to show you the low level spot wind chart. And this is a little bit confusing at first. What it does is it shows you the wind direction and speed and temperatures for various points on the map. So the point on the map is shown at the top of each box. So this is the map. It relates to 50 north um, and 02 degrees 30 minutes east. So uh, 50 degrees north, as you can see, is this line here. If you follow it right, it's shown in a couple of places, 50 north. And then 0 is this line here. 5 degrees west is here. 5 degrees east is here. So the, the point halfway through, which is 2 degrees 30 minutes east, is this line here. So this box is slap bang over the area to which it refers. And in fact, that's over France. So probably not, not that brilliantly helpful. What I want is uh, 0 degrees and something like 1 degree north. Well, they don't do anything there. Um, in fact, they don't do... Um, they, they do do zeros, but they do... Um, they don't do do a 55 north, a 52 30 north, um, but they don't do a 50 north. So anyway, you, you'll probably gather that the figures in, in these boxes here are reasonably similar. Now, the only one really we're going to be interested in in light aircraft is the bottom one in the box. And that's because that's at 1,000 feet. So um, we're, we can see that up to 1,000 feet, we've got winds coming from the west. 260 pretty much um, at 50 knots and the temperature is plus 5 so that is that's a pretty high wind and in fact if you climb up to 2000 feet the wind is going to come from true west at 60 knots uh, and the temperature is going to be plus 3 degrees all these 18,000 feet winds of course really we're not interested in where, where the temperature is minus 20 we're never going to get up if we do get up there then we'll, we'll be in big trouble um, but uh, so what I'm looking at is that bearing it doesn't really match which, which box you go to. You've got a, like a very, very strong westerly coming in at 30 or 40, 50, 60 knots. So in fact, uh, that's made my mind up. I'm not going to go flying today. This is not in the real world anyway. We might uh, try a circuit in the flight simulator, see, see how well it models a wind. In fact, with the runway at Manston being 2810, in fact, uh, a wind from 270s or 280s, it says here is is um, ideal. We're probably going to go straight up in the air without even moving forwards. And we need to worry about taxing and high winds like that. But anyway, that's the use of these charts, really, just to give you an idea of what sort of wind you can expect. Uh, and uh, that's also useful for later on when we're going to be planning and um, a 50 knot wind blowing in one direction is going to have a big impact on where you land uh, and where you need to point the nose of the plane so that's a little bit about uh, private pilot weather briefing and that's the sort of uh, self briefing that I would carry out if I was going to fly and um, if you I don't know whether these sort of charts are available in the public domain they may be and um, it doesn't cost much to join a briefing surface a, a service either whether it's a real world one or um or one that's uh, dedicated to um, FSX weather. So uh, I hope that's been helpful, and uh, next time I'll see you in the plane.